Today we are going to start off with a very interesting chapter that is going to bring out excitement and enthralling experience in all of you. Let me start this today's class with a very basic question to all of you. Do you really think that you and your benchmate who sits in the same bench of your classroom look similar to each other? I hope your answer will be no. Definitely we all individuals, even twins, look very different from one another if looked at intricate level. Now coming to the question of a better design, if I say that what is the difference between you, your friend and a monkey, then definitely you are going to speak out that you and your friend looks much similar than that of the monkey. And if I again get into a new animal tiger, then you will say, yes, me, my friend and the monkey looks quite similar to each other as compared to that of tiger. So the basic conclusion that we can draw from the discussions that I have just done now is many species, organisms present around us look similar morphologically. So we can conclude from these questions that I have asked just now that all the animals, all the organisms present around us can bear similarities as well as dissimilarities to each other on the basis of their own characteristics. So now we are going to start off with a very interesting chapter of biology that comes under your SA2 course that is diversity of living organisms chapter number 7. If I go by breaking up the terminologies of the chapter at the very outset I will point out to the term diversity. You all are acquainted with the word diversity in the way that diversity means variations. Diversity means differences. Diversity means the vivid classes of everything that we see around us. I hope you have all heard once or twice the term biodiversity, which means the diversity of our biological system. Plants, animals, fungi, algae, uh, everything that comes nearby to us show diversity in their characteristics. So diversity. The second term that is over here is living organisms which is very clear to us that all the living organisms present around us are very diverse. Now before going to the next half of the chapter I would like to show you certain models and you yourself can distinguish that why I am showing all of you. See this one. This is very clear to all of you. This is an, I will not tell, you will tell later on. Let us classify this as A. Let us classify this as A. The second one if I show you, this is this. A black colored organism with six appendages, that is six legs and two antenna. Okay. Now let us give this B, the name B. If I show you this one, you are quite acquainted with this animal as such. These are all plastic models that I am showing you. You can see it very clearly, this very animal which is very much familiar to us. Girls are always afraid of this animal's hopping. Let us name them as C. Okay. The next class of animal which I think you have not seen as such is this one. We will come across this animal when we go into details of all the kingdoms but just for the sake of now you can see this structure. It sometimes resembles that of the conch that you use during worshipping. Let us name it as D. Then we come across this group of animal which is very familiar to all of you with a tail and a feather, beak, two eyes and whom excreta we are very afraid of falling on us isn't it so we can name it as e last but not the least we cannot forget this living organism which is very important for our survival with green colored leaves this organism can be named as f now if I ask you people that how can you distinguish this six organisms A, B, C, D, E and F from one another, a definite answer that will come from you is F is plant while all this A, B, C, D, E are animals. 
Okay, agreed. So the first basic classification you yourself is doing that this is a plant and rest all of them I shown you are animals. Now if I say okay, F is a plant, I exclude that. Now rest in F, how can you classify the rest 5? That is A, B, C, D, E. At that time, a probable answer from my intelligent students can be that this E1 was a bird. Yes, it can fly. It can come across your path when you are moving. So, yes, okay, this is a bird. You have classified it on the basis of what? On the basis of its morphological structure. The nest, the feathers, the wing. You have classified it. This is bird. Okay. Now, if I say do the rest A, B, C, D. A general answer from you will be A is a grasshopper and B is a beetle. A is a grasshopper and B is a beetle. So you will say, sir, these two are insects. Agreed. These two are definitely insects. And we are left with our very sweet frog and that of a mollusk. We are going to learn about it. Don't worry. So you will say, this is a frog and this is a conch. Or if somebody of you knows, then this is called unio. So... What you have done yourself without my assistance is you have classified six group of living organisms based on their morphological structure. What is that? Morphological means outer structure. You have understood that if it has wings, then it is bird. If it has leaves, then it is plant. If it is having appendages, legs, then it will be a grasshopper. If it is green in color, then it will be a grasshopper. If it's black, then it's a beetle. So, the basic concept that I want to bring about now is that all around us, we can see millions of species roaming, hopping, jumping, climbing, screaming and we are able to classify them accordingly. Am I able to understand? Okay. So now coming to the next part is, if I go by the textual portions of your NCRT, then there is a discussion upon the size of organisms that we see around us. All of you might have heard about the largest flower of the world whose name is Rafflesia. I am writing it. This is the largest flower of the world. Its smell is also very bad. You know, pollination, you might have heard about this. Pollination of Rafflesia is done by big animal as elephant, okay? And we have seen very small plants as well like that of the grasses. So I can conclude that grasses are the smallest or rather they are semi-smaller, less than them also uh, plants are found. So in plants also we can see a variety of, an uh, ver uh, variety of organisms. In animals also, we can see such variety. We can start from the tiny ants and end into the largest whale that is found to be the king of the oceans. Okay, so was there any attempt for the first time to classify these organisms? Yes, the bewildering evidence to the fact is for the first time Aristotle You all have heard about Aristotle. The, for the first time, Aristotle, who is said to be the father of zoology, that is animal biology, first classified the very big organisms into two groups, plants and animals. Now, how did he classify? He classified on the basis of their habitat. If they are living in land, he mostly classified them as plants. Then he made air and water as other two sections of habitat for the organisms to stay. But it was wrong. Though it was the first attempt, but it was found to be wrong. Why? Because it is very misleading. Many animals who are found to be in water were excluded. Many plants who are found to be in water were excluded. Only birds were considered as animals because they are used to fly in the air. As well as those as compared to that of the land animals were considered as such. So, after Aristotle, there was a huge need for a basic and a good system of classification. Let us go into that.